and I'm Major. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our channel. channel. If you're new here, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're not, thank you for being a part of our family. We hope you enjoy your stay. Today we're going to be talking about the five biggest mistakes that new puppy owners make and five that you should avoid. So the first one is going to have to do with a very, very big topic, potty training. When you bring a puppy home, dogs are really big on environmental association. So with potty pads, those are something that for some reason they're still selling in stores because people are using them. And it might seem like, oh, I get to put this pad on the floor, I'm going to teach my dogs to go in this one spot inside. But if your dog learns that it's okay to go inside on a potty pad, then it's okay for them to go inside and they're going to start finding things like bathroom mats and carpets to go on because they won't understand the difference. Another example is when you take your dog outside to go to the bathroom, you want to make sure you don't immediately bring them right in after they go to the bathroom because they'll think they're being punished for going to the bathroom outside. So you want to just make sure you, know, you give them some time afterwards so they don't negatively associate them being outside for have the party stop. I don't want the party to stop. Okay, number two is going to be not restricting freedom right away or giving too much freedom right away. There are a couple examples we can give of this. How it makes sense to my brain is when you bring a dog home, you're able to set up every expectation that you have for them and how it's going to be in your house. But you can't take stuff back after you've already given them freedom without them being like, hmm, what the heck? So when you bring a puppy home, you should for sure have baby gates, you should kennel train them, and if you're working from home or if you're doing something around the house and or you're leaving and can't watch them, they should either be in their crate or be in a restricted area so they can't start getting into really bad habits that you're gonna have to work super hard to break them all the time. Another example is walking them off leash as soon as you bring them back home. You know, at the beginning, they're, they're young, and they feel like, you know, they're not used to the environment and they're a little nervous. So they stand close to you, they follow you around and everything like that. So you might be like, oh, I guess I can keep them off leash, but you'll start to walk them outside. They'll slowly but surely start experimenting and get further and further away from you because they're comfortable walking off leash. And eventually they won't listen to you and you'll be having trouble with them all the time, walking away, uh, not coming when you're calling them and stuff like that. Number three is going to be over socializing <coughs> or under socializing. The best way I can explain this is letting your dog say hi to everyone and everything, letting everyone come into your dog's space. There's a couple reasons for this. One is because with dogs, space equals respect. So there's two ways this can affect your dog if you're having everyone come say hi to them. If your dog's super social and loves attention, they might become reactive because they're excited and crave that attention. Or if you're letting everyone into their space and they're nervous, they're going to start realizing that you're not advocating for them and setting boundaries, and that can lead to more aggressive reactivity. Yeah, you definitely don't want to introduce them to a lot of people and have them get used to, you know, getting a lot of love just up front. Because you go to take them to a restaurant and you're trying to enjoy your mimosa and the biscuits or something like that, and yeah, you, you can't get them to stop wanting to talk to people, so they're probably going to start barking all over the place and things like that just because they like the attention. Going off of what you're saying, <clears throat> when you're taking your dog out, it shouldn't be like, okay, you get to say hi to everyone, but it shouldn't be, okay, no one is ever going to say hi to you. What I like to do with my dogs is some outings I'll take treats, and if people want to say hi to my dog, they'll say, oh, hey, I'm going to have them sit. If you can nicely give them a treat, that would be awesome. And then sometimes people ask to pet them and I'll let them know, thank you, they're in training. It really depends on where my dog's at, but you want to create a positive association with seeing new people, but not too positive and intense with the association. Number four is a big one. It's not grooming them and not clipping their nails right when they're eight weeks old or whenever you get them. It's so much easier setting good grooming habits with an eight week old small puppy than it is compared to a hundred pound big well, I think I agree with that because it's the same thing with a child. If you um, go to teach them young, then they're willing to make that adjustment opposed to an old adult that's like in there, stuck in their ways and they're like, ah, I'd rather not change. 
Also, just an uh, example, um, Kobu, that's one of our dogs, one of our Australian Shepherds. Um, on the screen. Yeah, he's been getting groomed since he was young and um, he's always had a little bit of a shy issue with people and stuff like that, but I think since we've broken him in and started him young with that, um, that's not really one of his biggest issues when it comes to being shy and stuff like that. He's able to actually go in and um, he's, he's getting better day by day every time we uh, get him really. Number five, when you are a new puppy mom or new puppy dad, you want your child to just thrive. You want them to be the best child ever and be all happy and only have rainbows and unicorns in their life. So you'll tend to give them the answers. You're going to make life super easy for them, but that is extremely detrimental to their brain and their development and their confidence in the long run. A really good example of this is, say your dog's scared to get in the car. Are you gonna whip them in the car the first time and then make that normal? Or are you gonna say, hey, this might take 30 minutes, but you're gonna get in the car yourself. Oh yeah, That's like we definitely have some older ones that kind of expect it uh -huh. in our group. They kind of expect it to get lifted, and that's our, our bad for not teaching that at a younger age. But then the ones that we have gotten, like more recently, we taught them to jump, actually jump in the car, and yeah, we don't have to worry about it. We just say up, oh, and they just jump. Yeah, and we we're using the car example, which is a really good example, but. In life, you're going to expose your dog, especially if you're a dog mom or a dog dad, taking them to new places. They're going to see things they're unsure about. So if you're always giving them the answers, they're a lot more likely to shut down and be nervous and be anxious every single day and every time they encounter something slightly new. Where if you allow them to work through it, now it creates that muscle memory for them to be able to work through it and cope on their own. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, tap the little bell button to alert you when we do post videos we'll try to get better at it yeah and honestly comment down below what puppy tip you think is most helpful but also what puppy tip we didn't cover that helped you out so much when you were using